The message you're about to listen to is by Rev. Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. Remain blessed as you listen. Glory to God. <laughs> ah, okay. Where do I want to start from? Aha. Uh-huh. So we are going to be looking at angels. This is Todd, right? Todd teaching. All right. We are talking about angels, and we are going to be looking at them under order, authority, and structure. There are some things I'm going to share today. I don't think I have shared before. All right, but I've shared them scatteredly, but I don't think I've shared this like this before. So under we're looking at angels under order, authority, and structure. Let's examine our theme scripture again. Hebrews chapter number 1 and verse 14. It says, Are they not all ministering spirits? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Now we said that that word for is the Greek word what? Is the Greek word what? Dia, which means what? True. Uh, I gave you examples of where true was used. For example, Acts chapter 1 verse 2, where the Bible says that he, through the Holy Ghost, gave them commandments. So we saw that we could better translate, all right, that word in um, Hebrews 1 14. Instead of saying for, all right, we can better translate it as what? True. Because true, all right, or dia implies instrumentality. Are you following? Because many at times, when people read Hebrews 1 14 and they use that word for, they begin to imagine that angels are their servants are you following and that they exist for them all right but the scripture doesn't teach that angels are not your servants they are god's servants there is no place in scripture where angels are said to be the servants direct servants of men so if we're going to say angels serve men it will be that they serve or minister all right to men under the authority of what of god are you following are you following? All right. So they are they are ministering spirits. And one on one and four verse four says that they are what they are ministering spirit. He has made his angel spirit and his ministers a what a flames of fire. All right. So the, he calls them his ministers. They are his ministers. Glory to God. Glory to God. So when you see here minister for them, minister for them, he's saying minister through them. So that means the activities of angels is tied to the activities of men. The activities of angels is tied to the what? The activities of men. So the degree to which you have angelic activity in the life of a man is tied to that man. That man, all right, primarily. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now, so let us now look at the first thing we want to talk about, the order of angels. Order. We want to look at angelic order and structure. Amen. Now, for many years... I would admit that I didn't understand this, this, what I want to teach you. And the reason why I didn't understand it was that I went with what was generally taught about this. You understand? You know, many times there are certain doctrinal positions you take. And you take those doctrinal positions, not because you did an in-depth study, but because it's what is generally accepted. Are you, you understand? Hmm. And the thing about, and the reason why that is, is that, all right, in Christianity, there's this mistake sometimes we tend to make. And the mistake is this, is that when you come into a place, or right, when you come into, you know, maybe you want to start a church, sometimes what people just do is find out what, do, what you know, when it comes to doctrine, you just find what, what, what are these popular people saying, you know, you know, their positions, then you adopt those positions and all. Now, look at Ephesians 3 verse 10. I'll explain what I'm saying now. All right, I'll explain what I'm saying now when, you know, when we look at this. It's about principalities and powers. I mean, obviously, sometimes when you hear principalities and powers, the first thing you think is that the principality is the most senior, the most the very strong, you understand? So you hear people say it's principalities and powers, you understand, things like that. And we now begin to think that the highest form of, the highest rank an angel or a demon has, all right, in the, in the ranking of demoniac, in demoniac realms and in the angelic order, we think that the highest is principality. But I'm going to show you today, that actually, that the principality is the lowest. Hallelujah. The principality is actually the lowest. It's not the highest, it's the lowest. You will see it from scripture, and I will show you how, you know, we come, come to that post poem, that um, conclusion. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. It said, To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold world, what? Manifold world? Wisdom of God. Now, this Ephesians 3 10, the principalities and powers being referred to here are angels. Now, principalities and powers are used to refer to angelic order. 
and also used to refer to demonic order in scripture praise god so because both are angels are you following and angels that are fallen glory to god did not lose their structure because they fell are you following all right so for example it's like an army that goes renegade because they go renegade it doesn't mean that they lose their structure the general is still a general it's just a gen- renegade what general for example in the biafran army they had generals in the biafran army you understand and they still had their structure they had major they had, you understand what i'm saying so it's still the same you know structure so in Ephesians 3 10 tells call you have principalities and powers in colossians chapter 1 verse 16 let's look at this in colossians chapter 1 verse 16 we now have a fuller representation of the ranking of angels in Ephesians 3 10 we only have principalities and powers in colossians 1 16 we have something more full he says, For by him were all things created that are where in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. What does that mean? It means in heaven you have visible entities, glory to God, and you have invisible entities. On earth you have visible entities, or you have what? Invisible entities. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So he says, Visible and invincible, all right, whether they be thrones, all dominions, all principalities, all what? All powers, all things were created what? By him and what? For him. Now notice something. When he says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and visible, whether they be thrones, all dominions, all principalities or powers, he's talking about angels. Hallelujah. Now, this what does it let us know? It lets us know that these classes of angels are both in heaven and where? On the earth. Are you following? Are you following? Don't worry, you'll find while we touch, stu- studying this, you will know as we go on. All right, all right, as we go on. Now it, it tells you now, so you see four others. You have principalities, you have powers, you have thrones, and you have what? Dominions. Glory to God. All right, you have thrones or dominions. Now notice the order. The order here. Notice it starts with thrones. It doesn't start with principalities and powers. It starts with what? Thrones. Then the next thing is what? Dominions. Then the next thing is what? Principalities. Then the next is what? Powers. So in in the other scripture we saw principalities and powers. Now in this one it starts from thrones and it ends up at what? At powers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now let's look at it. What is principality? The word principality, all right, is the Greek word arche. That's a a r c h e and what it means basically is chief or the first all right it means chief or the first hallelujah all right chief or the first now paul in writing about the order of angels and order of demonic spirits all right used the administrative structure of the roman empire to explain to explain it you understand now how was the empire of rome structured it was structured with at the time of paul the empire of rome was structured with the emperor at the very top so the emperor was the supreme leader you understand then after you had the emperor the next person after the emperor was the consul there was a guy called consul the consul was the head of the senate so the consul was the guy who related with the senate every single time you understand now before if you go and study roman history you find that before they entered into the period of being an empire because um, julius caesar was the first person who wanted to be an empire because the roman kingdom was not structured to have a king so that's why you not find an expression called king of rome you get all right it wasn't structured to have a king it was structured to be ruled by senators like a democracy you understand but julius caesar came and changed that then you now had augustus caesar all right claudius all right who came and was the first emperor empire um, what do you call it uh, emperor you know in, in form so you now had another you know um head created but the consul, who was the previous head of the Senate, was under him. Are you following? Then after you had the consul, you now had governors of regions. So you have the governor of Syria. You have the governor of um, Jerusalem. You have, for example, what's the name of this guy? Pontius Pilate, right? Was the governor of the Palestine region with Herod as someone under him. So Herod was a king. But he was under, you understand, that guy. Because Pontius Pilate was guy over that region. 
you understand because the romans understood that they could not rule a vast region without working with local authorities are you following so now the local authority who was in charge of a particular region was called the what a principality do you understand so for example if you i don't know if you know of monaco here i don't know if you know of monaco i don't know of monaco now you know monaco all right is in france but it is independent of france so you have it is called the principality of monaco so the principality of monaco has a ruler you understand but that ruler okay to a large extent works with the kingdom the government in france do you understand so though it is not really stated monaco is subject to france in some way you understand they depend on france for security protection and all of that so the principality was like a small region all right all right with a ruler over that small region so jerusalem was a principality of rome with herod as the boss of that principality so he could rule he could do anything he wanted to do but he was still subject to who pilot he was still subject to what to rome are you following are you following so when we, if we look at the our own um setup today we can say the principality can be a local government chairman do you understand so a local government chairman you know a local government chairman can collect tax from you you know it can make your life a living hell because he's an authority in that local government now outside of his local government he doesn't have any say so there are many principalities so that's why you find out that the word principality the word principality appears as principalities you notice it is usually plural you will never see principality in the bible you will see principalities because they are usually plenty they are in charge of small regions small regions you understand so just as you have principalities in angelic forces you also have principalities in demonic forces come on is, is it yes, <laughs> so you must understand that so you now have that now the next step is now the powers the powers the word powers in scripture is the greek word exousia all right, where well, you get Luke 10 19, but I give of you uh, unto you what power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power or the ability of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means what hurt you. That word is exousia. Now, exousia, you cannot talk about authority without an office because authority is tied to what an office. So, the exousia, all right, in the Roman structure will be the governors of regions so that's why you find that several principalities all right are under authorities so you have an authority over principalities are you following so the authority exerts influence over a territory through the various principalities in that territory wait are you following what i'm saying or is it too high it's simple now praise god or you are still feeling sleepy or the rain that is about to come is what's worrying you hallelujah now listen so you now have the exousias the powers they are the power structures that they rule over the principalities are you following then the next one you now have all right are the thrones the thrones and now i'm describing angelic structure now so you now have the thrones sorry you have the uh what do you call it the dominions now the word dominion here is the greek word kuriotes they are lords these guys are lords so see angels are not of the same level of authority that's the first thing you need to know and understand they are not on the same level of authority and the ones assigned to ministers and ministries all right are assigned based on the assignment of that minister or ministry praise god I think that will be something I'll teach on next week or two weeks from now. Praise God. You understand? So, all right, Kuriotis. Now, let's go back to Colossians 1, 15 and 16. Colossians 1, uh, 15 and 16. All right, let's read. It says what? All 
all right who is the image of the invisible god right all right the first one of every creature 16 now goes to say for by him were all things created so what is what are we trying to see what is paul trying to show us paul is trying to show us the superiority all right of jesus to who angels so that's why he talks about jesus being the image of the invisible god then goes to 16 to tell you all these great angels he's above them so now dominions here you now have dominions all right are talking of angels that are lords these guys are lords all right they are senior to the exousias praise god now let me show you something before you understand what we are saying. So you see that structure to an extent. Look at Joshua chapter number 6. Joshua 6. Verse 1. Now, Jericho was strictly shut up because of children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Verse 2. Uh, no, I want us to go to where the captain of the Lord's host appeared to Jesus. I think it is uh, the ending of Joshua 5. Where an angel appears to Joshua, and Joshua is trying to find out who he is, all right, then he says, I am the captain, all right, of the Lord's host. Captain of the Lord's host. So that means that, look, I said, uh huh. He said, let's start from verse 13. Joshua was asking, Are you with, are you for us or against us? He said, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand and joshua went unto him and said unto him are thou for us or for our adversaries now look at what he says in 14 and he said nay but as captain of the hosts of the lord am i now come and joshua fell on his face unto the earth and did worship and said unto him what said my lord unto his servant now this guy was the leader of the deployment of the angels that was sent to help joshua fight in jericho are you following? So, what that makes you see is that this guy was a leader of a contingent of angels. Praise God. Now, this is not the Lord. How do we know? Because the Bible makes us understand that the Lord is called, he's called the Lord of hosts. This guy is the captain of the Lord's hosts. So, he is introducing himself to Joshua that this is my rank in the angelic forces. Are you following? Come on, are you following? Yeah. All right, I'm going to show you another rank because this guy says he's a captain. You are going to come to a place where you see angels that are called chief princes. You understand? Chief princes. This guy was not a chief prince. He was a captain. He was the leader of the contingent sent to help who? Joshua. So that's why you now understand that the wall of Jericho falling down was not because they were shouting. The wall of Jericho falling down was the work of what? These guys. Are you following? To let you understand how powerful angels are, they could bring down thick walls. But what we now find is that they were able to do that after Joshua followed specific instructions they gave. Glory to God. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know many of you, how many of you read the teachings I sent to you on whatsapp i'm if you have been reading it now there i told you that the old testament scriptures most of the prophets what they wrote they wrote it because they were given it by angels god sent the angel the angel delivered the message to them but when you study the old testament writings you will find out that many times when he starts out by talking about and the angel of the lord said to this guy later on as he continues to progress he will not begin to say and the lord said to him and the Lord said to him, have you noticed that? If you look at Exodus chapter 3. So you will now think that what was going on was uh, that it was now the Lord physically talking to... No, he's, 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 he had already told his angel of the Lord. So he's calling that angel, talking to... You understand? The... <laughs> what do you call it? To the person, his rank. Oh, hallelujah. His rank is curiotes. Are you following? That is the word dominion. Uh, oh, amen. He's right. That's his rank. So when he says, and the Lord said, and because that angel is a Lord, that's his rank. And the Lord said to him, and the Lord said to him, and the Lord said to him. Because it was angels they were dealing with. Does that make the revelation any? No. Notice, angels were the ones that gave the words to the prophets that they prophesied. Hallelujah. Angels were the ones that announced when Jesus came. Are you following? Angels.
angels were the one that protected Israel until Christ came. Then angels were the one that announced, announced that Christ would come. They announced to Mary. They announced to Joseph. When Christ was born, angels were the one that warned Joseph where to go. So you find that the entire salvation plan, God used angels from start to finish. Because that's who they are. Sent forth to minister through the heirs of salvation. So the activities of angels is tied to the salvation plan. Are you following? Are you following? Come on, are you following? All right. So it's angels speaking. Angels speaking. Glory to God. So these are true. What are you talking about? Dominions. They are rulers or lords. That's the rank. Rulers. Or lords, they have angels they supervise, they have angels under them. Then you have the highest form, the thrones. The Greek word for that is thronos. These are these guys that they are they are king angels, they are ruling angels, they are, they have authority. You understand? All right. Another word for them you find in the book of Daniel, the Bible calls them watchers. Have you heard of them? Have you heard of that word? Watchers. So in the book of Daniel, if you look at the story of Nebuchadnezzar, the Bible tells us that Nebuchadnezzar was warned, all right, that Luko, he had a dream, and in the dream, is you know, something happened to him. He didn't understand him. Daniel came and said, you will be mad for a season, seven years, all right, and you would, you know, lose your mind. Then Nebuchadnezzar was, he repented for a while. Then after some time, the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar was walking, you understand? On the <laughs> on his uh, what do you call it? On the patio. I was like, is this not Babylon that I have built for the glory of her? And just then he went mad. But you see, in the prophecy and the explanation of the vision that Daniel gave to Nebuchadnezzar, he said this thing is a decree of the what? Of the watchers. Those are senior angels, they have a responsibility. Their responsibility has to do with, in the Old Testament, was had to do with the alignment of the kingdoms of the earth to prepare them for the coming of Christ. So one kingdom will rise, they will allow a kingdom rise, then they will bring it down for another one to rise until the kingdom that was supposed to be present when Jesus will be born was in power. I don't want to go into all of that because of time, but go and read the book of Daniel, you'll see what I'm talking about. The prince of Persia had to go for the prince of Grecia to come. Then the prince of Grecia had to go, all right, so that what? Rome can rise. So you see that order, you understand, in what the angels did. Praise God. All right, now, let's continue. So we see that the lowest, is, it starts from principalities, then you have what? Powers, then you have what? Thrones, then you have dominions. Now, let us now look at the parallel, how the scripture talks about the order in the demonic kingdom. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Okay, before we do that, for you to know that Paul was using, all right, a system that was already present to explain to you, you see this in Titus 3. Look at Titus 3 and 1. Titus 3 and 1. He says, put them in mind to be subject to what? Principalities and what? So obviously, it's not saying be subject to demons now. Hallelujah. So he's talking about people, all right, whose title was principality. Then he now talks about what? Powers. Look at the next thing he now says. He said, to obey what? Who are magistrates? Magistrates were the ones that gave laws. Praise God. Who gave laws? These are lords. Satraps, they were the ones that, all right, that were closest to, you know, the, the top guys, the king. So it says, obey magistrates. Obey them. So he, used the, he uses the administrative structure in Rome to explain angelic order and explain a jury. You understand? Are you following? Hmm. It doesn't mean that the angels call themselves principalities and powers. It means that Paul uses the principal, the order in the administrative structure to explain angelic order and to explain demonic order. Are you following? So in if Paul was in our time, he will use another word. You can say local governments and governors. You know, for there are local governments and governors and presidents of nation that overall pre- you understand that's how we use it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right, praise God. Look at Ephesians 6. 
Now we're going to now look at the order of fallen angels, Ephesians 6 and 12. It says, For we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, against what? Powers. Now notice, against the rulers of the darkness of what? This world. Now notice. The demonic spirits influence these are fallen angels. Alright. You have the first level is the principality. Their involvement is in regions on the earth. The second level are the exousias, that's powers. Their involvement is where? In the earth. Then you now have the highest demonic authority as it relates to the earth realm. They are called the rulers of the what? Darkness of this world. These guys, these are the dominion level demons. Are you following? Are you following? Yeah. So they are the rulers of the darkness of this world are the dominion level demons. They are the curiotes. They are the lords. So they are lord rank in the demonic fallen angel structure. Praise God. Now, the highest guys in this structure are the spiritual wickedness in where? High places. So those guys don't operate from the earth. Are you following? These guys don't operate from the earth. So they are the ones that design and craft the ideology and the policies. Are you following? Hand it over to the lords. Then the lords hand it over to the exousias, and the principalities are the ones that implement. So that's why you find out that in particular locations of the earth, there are certain policies. Oh, <laughs> praise God. I'll give you one that is going on now. COVID. Abby? Now let me tell you what is going on. <laughs> Where the enemy wants to get to is to withdraw the individual liberties that me and you have, which is the ability to choose. And ensure that more power is vested in the states. Oh, glory to God. So that the government will have more authority than it should have. So, currently, you should be able to gather anywhere. You should be able to do what you want to do anywhere. Are you following? Alright, that's basically what liberty is about. But now what is going on is that with COVID, COVID is now going to be used as an excuse to limit the liberties of people. Are you following? So that if you don't take that vaccine, there's nothing wrong with taking vaccine. But I'm just showing you. If you don't do this, you can't do this. If you don't do this, you can't do this. You understand? If you don't get a permit, you cannot gather somewhere to worship. You, you understand? So now that's the current agenda. Restriction. Consolidating power away from the people and consolidating it among elites. A feudal system. Like a fascist system. That's where, that's where the thing is going. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's where it's going. Hallelujah. That's the place. That's where everything is. And that's where it will end up. More power in the states, in the in the nation states, in the rulers, in the government, where they will be able to have more influence than they should have. Have more say than they should have in your life. Praise God. So let's leave that right. So are you seeing this? So the spiritual we in high places, those guys are, don't operate on the earth. They are the seniors. The primary office is in the heavens. That's in the spirit realm. They don't come and possess people, no. Their own is ideology, instruction. They are the policy makers. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see that this, that's the structure. That's how it is structured. In the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Hmm. So angels have ranks. Many times, if you don't understand, many times many believers don't understand how great the authority in Christ is. 
when you look at the might of angels and you now understand that as a believer you are senior to them that is when you now understand ah, what am i how what am i exactly who am i what have i done to deserve this honor because to be in christ is the greatest honor that can be confirmed on any being not just man any what being angels serve christ but they are not in him they are not in him angels serve christ but are not seated in the highest rank the reason why satan rebelled was because he saw the place god had prepared for man god had prepared for man to sit at god's own right hand what i want to sit there what do you mean you you understand he want to just be an angel he wanted something higher hallelujah now we've talked about angels as regards order right now let us now talk about angels as regards rank ranking because what we have just looked at principality and power we're looking at administrative order so administrative order tells you because administrative order talks about responsibilities right right so for example when we're talking about responsibility we're talking about what they do okay so the principality if you are casting out a demon from somebody right you are most likely dealing with who a principality demon you understand so if you get into a place and you find out that there is a lot of sexual immorality it means that the principal demon in that area is an unclean spirit as regards sex if it is drugs and you understand you just find out that you are dealing with that principality demon that's the guy you are dealing with that's the main guy you are handling in that place so for example in surulere the principal demon the principality demon in surulere majorly is it's all about drugs and immorality you understand then also there, there there's a lot of diabolical stuff in surreal there are a lot of people that actually consult with spirits there are a lot of altars around surreal this place you are in <laughs> yeah glory to god surreal motion same thing but in lucky is different in lucky they have altars there all right but this demonic <laughs> <laughs> but the demonic spirits there what they sponsor the principality they sponsor intellectualism you understand a denier of god so at that level what they do is to deny god downplay the supernatural even though they consult the supernatural so principalities differ and what I teach you in this is you need to have an under you cannot do anything if you don't know how to deal with these guys. You can't take territories that you must understand this thing. Glory to God. You need to understand it. You need to understand how to deploy angels, then you need to understand how to deal with devils. You know, see, you know principality. You can deal with principality by casting devil out of somebody. Right? So how you deal with the guy who is not in somebody? But is the guy running things? Because why you, a demon you cast out from someone response, is responsible for that one person. They are demonic spirits whose job is to create a culture. Oh, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Their own job is to institute a culture, a way of life in the people, in the territory. You can't cast that one out. Amen? Amen? You can't cast that one out. You will have to win the people in that area. Glory to God. In large numbers, then you now have to disciple them. You have to replace that culture that that spirit has sponsored with a divine culture. So, full takeover of territories is not done by just binding devils. After you have bound devils, you put the gospel there. Hallelujah. And after you put the gospel there, you want to disciple the people. So, for example, to take Surulere, it's not about saying every demon in the heaven is. No, no, no. After you have done that, you will now have to go outside and preach the gospel. 
Praise God. After you are preached, most people now have to accept the gospel. Then they now have to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you now have to bring them to church and what? Disciple them. Listen, you cannot take over territory without taking over the people. So when we say bring people to church, we know what we are telling you to do. There's a reason we are saying it. Because as long as the people are sleeping on Sunday, Amen? That culture shift will not happen. Hallelujah. So invitation is warfare. Evangelism is warfare. Amen? The praying part that you do is the priestly part of the warfare. The one that you are doing by preaching and investing, that one is on the ground. Praise God. So we are trying to understand what this thing is about. Glory to God. <laughs> All right, now let's not talk about ranking. We have... Now, we don't have clear this in like, okay, so maybe it's in the private, in the in the first in the, No, we, but what we have is that we have a term called Archangel. Ark, the Ark. All right, so we have angels that are called the Arks. So I was studying, I said, Lord, can I call them the Ark? Lord said, that's cool. You can call them the Ark. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ah, yeah, yeah, brethren. One more. There is spiritual realm. And God's mercy is by God's mercy that you not see too much of it. Because if you see too much, you want to live. If you see spiritual realm a lot, you find that earth is boring. Ah! Spiritual realm, one man. Bone that side. So when someone tells me that there's all this, all this stuff that are we in 14th century, I always just laugh and walk away. I don't have time. You see, this way I am like this. I am like this. Like if you say it's wrong, I say you are right. If you say it's right, you are right. You see, there, you have, I have this to do. I can't be agreeing. That's what I don't do. So I share something. And the one person, when I share something, and the person now came and did thread on my this thing. I just repeat that. Okay. okay. <laughs> Life is not hard. I be. It's okay. Amen. Amen. Someone that just got bought gone again two years ago is arguing with me. And this so ah, so that we will not be doing and yeah, yeah, then you know, then they'll be talking. I said, let's leave your rights. Leave it alone. Amen. Jude chapter number one. <laughs> He's just leave it alone, you are right. You are the Jagagba. Jude one, number nine. Angels. Hey! There was something I saw today, one angel did in scripture. When I saw it, I said, Hey! Chai. Chai! Hey! <laughs> yeah, yeah. hey. I said, You mean you have these dudes working with me? Hey! Hey, I'm on to say, When Jesus said anything is possible, he wasn't joking. That's why someone say they don't have womb and they have baby. Yeah. Mm. Ah, ah. What are you talking about? Do you, 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 you know who we are dealing with? Do you know the the, the infrastructure <laughs> that we have at our disposal? Do you know uh, an application letter you didn't write can appear in offices in your name and with your signature? <laughs> Those are the people we are dealing with here. Oh. Do you understand? <laughs> These are supernatural forces you are talking of. And uh, you see, I don't know, I'm limited in Nigeria. You don't know what you are saying. You are limited in Nigeria. You are. <laughs> Jude 1 9. Oh, yeah, now where is verse 9? Hallelujah. Is this thing, is this, are you, are you, are you being blessed? Yes, sir. Or I should stop? No. Okay, all right. Uh, what happened? This, the laptop has died. Oh, yeah, let's look at Jude 1 9. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, what does this say? Can we read one to go? Uh, yet, Michael, the what? Archangel. Notice he calls him the archangel. Now, notice something. He didn't say one of the archangels. He said, Michael, what? The archangel. So there's only one. There's only what? One. Which means the Ogat Pata Pata in the angelic realm is who? Michael. 
is the archangel. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. Now notice, he says, yet Michael, I want you to show, I want you to wait with you. He says, yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with who? The devil. He disputed about the body of Moses. Does not bring against him a running accusation, but said the Lord what? Rebuked him. Now notice something. Archangel Michael was contending with what? With the devil. Notice who was contending with the devil. Sorry, who also said it with Michael? It was who? The devil. Which is very, what this act likely tells us is that it's very likely that before Satan's fall, he was an archangel too. Are you following? Why? Because authority will clash with authority. As we see in Revelation, you find out that when Satan was thrown out from his office, all right, the person that threw him out was Michael. Not Gabriel. Michael. So for you to now understand the level of authority Satan himself must have commanded. He was not a junior. No, he wasn't. That guy was something. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. So I have to note that most times when you are casting out a devil, it doesn't mean you are dealing with the devil. You understand? Are you following? All right. So that's why you're saying that when Jesus spoke about when you feel the scripture, you say, and he cast out devils. That's those are demon, the amonons, evil spirits. Then, but later on, Jesus said, I for I saw Satan. So Satan is usually singular. But devils is what? Plural. There are many devils. But there's only one word, Satan. Because this guy, Satan, alright, the devil, must have been an ark. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Now look at our scripture, First Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of who? D, not Archangel. Mm-mm. D, Archangel. And we've seen that the Archangel is who? Is Michael. And with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Are you seeing that? Come on, are you seeing that? <laughs> All right. Now, we also have another expression in terms of rank. In Daniel chapter 10, verse 13, showing us that though Michael is the archangel, he also has generals. Angels in the general class that work with him. Okay? Look how it says. He said, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. All right, one and twenty days. Now look how he says. He says, but lo, Michael, one of the what? So that means there are not, there's not just one chief prince. There are many chief princes. Michael is one of them. Are you following? It's like saying one of the generals. Michael, one of generals. Now notice something very important. It was not all the generals that came to help Gabriel. Amen. It was one of them. Now, pay attention. If Michael had to be the one to come and help Gabriel, him being a chief prince, it lets you know the category of demon, or sorry, the category of in the angelic office that the prince of Persia was. Notice, the prince of Persia was not a principality. The prince of Persia was not a what? A power. The prince of Persia was not a dominion. This prince of Persia must have been at the level of spiritual wickedness in what? Heavenly places. That was why they met him where? In the heavenlies. Do you get? So, the fight was there. Amen. Letting you understand that demonic princes at the level of spiritual wickedness are what? They are what? Chief princes. Amen. Amen. Why is it possible that a church can be in a place and is doing well in that location? That church must have it's in a country 
but is doing well in a region of that country. That church has done well in prayer and the word and all has handled the principalities and powers there. Are you following? Has handled principles and powers there. But the influence of that church in the realm of spirit has not yet grown to the level of what? Dealing with what? Regional forces. Then dealing with what? The chief forces in that nation. So when you look at Nigeria and look at people that have done that, you look at people like Pastor Iadiboy. The first to do that was Benseni Daosa. Are you following? Are you following? So when the Lord begins, for example, when the Lord told us, spread. When he said spread. It meant, what that meant was that spread. I have already upgraded the infrastructure. Are you following? Yes, sir. I've upgraded the infrastructure. So that when you enter this region, you will do well there. When you enter that region, you will do there. So it is not ambition. That is why you cannot just say you want to start ministry. You will die before your time. No, I'm not cursing. I'm saying the truth. Ministry is not ambition. It's a spiritual matter. Ha! It's a spiritual matter. The moment you say, Jesus, I'm done, 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 you have, look, you have elected the forces in that area. It's a spiritual matter. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. The moment you begin to cast out the devil and the devil leaves, where is he going? He's going to give you reports. And you better be sent. You better be sent. Praise God. St. Michael, one of the chief priests, he said, he came to help me. Which means that Gabriel, at his level, needed help. Alright, we're going to also... Ah, time is going. Praise the Lord. We have to stop soon. Some of you are not... I don't know. Some of you are not enjoying... Some of you are dozing. Are you dozing? Are you enjoying this thing? Ah, the way Big Daddy Bams is writing. It's like he's going to write book after this, this happened. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, look at Revelation 12, 7. Chief princes have their angels. You understand? So, a chief, for example, you know, a general will have a brigadier general in his army, in his, in, his, in his group. He will have, you know, like that, like that. So, a chief prince will have a dominion under him. He will have someone in the class of a lord under him. He will have someone in the class of an exousia under him. Are you following? He will have someone in the class of a what? Of a principality under him. Are you following? Uh-huh. Now, look at what he says. Revelation 12, 7. And there was war we are in heaven. Michael and his angels. Notice, Michael and who? It didn't say Michael and the Lord's angels. No. He said Michael and his angels. So there are angels that report to Michael. All right? Fought against the dragon. That's the devil. And the dragon fought and his angels. Chief prince against chief prince. You see that? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at Daniel 12, 1. Michael is called the great prince. I was telling my wife today, I said, among agents, angels, they are legends. They are stories they talk about. Wow, man, I remember the battle of the heavens at the beginning. There was war. And you know that as in Prince Michael, he was one that handled that rebel. They tell themselves, do you remember? Do you remember? I remember. They have, you think they just stand like this and don't say anything? No, they talk. They are social people. They talk. I say, at that time, shall, you see, talking, and, you see, and at that time, shall Michael stand up? The great prince, which standed for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was, since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. This is the battle of the last days. This is our time of the Antichrist. He's saying here that Angel Michael will be one of the most active and busy angels during that period. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we can see, all right, in the Adelic there is clear order and structure. You understand? Now, there are different types all right of angels all right different types of angels then there are certain duties angels carry out for example gabriel is a chief announcer he's like the 
CNN chief correspondent, you understand, of heaven. All right, but you find that this kind of information Gabriel gave were usually information that centered around salvation. Now, very importantly for us to note, it is possible that Gabriel, all right, appeared because in the scriptures, Gabriel appears like five times in scripture. All right, two times when he had to do with once when it was time to announce Jesus to Mary, once when it was time to announce Jesus to sorry, John the Baptist's birth to, to Zechariah. Then you now have that every other time it was in the Old Testament. All right, in the book of Daniel, um, Daniel um, Gabriel appears two times. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! But it is possible he appeared more than that in the entire you know, scripture, but his name was not given you understand Uh uh-huh it's possible so so we know that gabriel was primarily a special engineer to deliver information he's the chief announcer all right uh, of information related to the salvation plan luke 126 luke 119 daniel 816 and daniel 921 those are the four places gabriel is mentioned now we also know that there are two classes of angels based on type or should we say race or something maybe let's just leave it at type all right the bible let us know that there are two types of angels we have the cherubims and we have the seraphims the cherubims and the seraphims you know i was was discussing with my wife and i said babe it's very weird for a church to be named cherubim and seraphim because what that means angels why would you name your i have got nothing against cherubim and seraphim i'm just wondering about the name why would you name a church cherubim and seraphim that's like saying white and black you understand? Cherubim and Seraphim is actually the, it's not even names of angels, all right? It's the classification of angels based on type. Based on what? Type. And we have clear cut um, anthropolo- anthropological description or morphological description of angels based on type in scripture. Praise God. Wait, first, let me just brag. How many people are glad you are part of this church? Very glad. <laughs> See what you are learning. I mean, on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Praise God. Now, you have cherubims and you have seraphims. All right? Now, the first mention of the word cherubims is Genesis chapter number 324. And in Genesis 324, you find that, that the cherubims, the, what, they, what you find them, how they appear, is that they guard the tree of life. So, the, for the first time, we see that the proximity of cherubims is to the tree of life. And we know the tree of life is who? Jesus. So, it's telling you the proximity of cherubims is to what? To the Lord. This is also repeated when you see all right the tabernacle of moses look at exodus 25 18 you also even find that many a times when the 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 saints old testament saints prayed they will say oh lord of hosts that dwell between the what the cherubims you understand showing you how close the che- you know the law um, the cherubims are to the lord all right so look what it says here it says in genesis 3 24 it says what does it say quickly can we read it says what Genesis 3.24. So he drove out the man and he placed and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and it was a flaming sword which turned everywhere to keep the way of the tree of life. Now next, um, we now see in Exodus 25.18, we see where it talks about the Lord dwelling between the cherubims and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten work, shalt thou make them in the two ends of what the mercy seat. The mercy seat was where the Lord was supposed to sit or where the blood of atonement was supposed to rest. The angels dwelt in between the two mercy seats. Look at first Samuel chapter four, verse four. First Samuel four, verse four. It says and reiterates the same thing where it talks about the uh, you know the Lord spoke from you know he says so the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts which dwelleth between the cherubims. Can you see that? Which dwelleth between the cherubims. Look at Psalm ninety nine and verse one. Psalm ninety nine and verse one. It says, the Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He seated where? Between the what? The cherubims. Let the earth what? Be moved. Look at Ezekiel chapter 10 from verse 3 to 5. Ah, I have to stop. Ezekiel chapter 10 verse 3 to 5. Look how this says. Now this is one part that's so interesting uh, once you see it. He said, now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house. 
when the man went in and the clouds filled the inner courts all right next verse four then the glory of the lord went up from the glory of the lord went up from where went up from where <laughs> so sometimes when we're having service and you say oh the glory of god everywhere is angels who angels communicate the presence of god you understand they communicate the presence of god and they communicate his voice then the glory of the Lord went up from the, the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud. All right. And the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. Now verse 5. He says, And the sound of the cherubim's way to listen. Oh. He said, And what? And the sound of the cherubim's what? Wings. He wings. Was heard even to the outer courts. As the voice of the almighty God when he speaks. Are you following? Why? Because these cherubims are around the presence of God. So they sound like him. Hallelujah. Then you have the seraphims. Seraphims appear just once. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2 to 6. Alright, we can read that when you get home. One of the major differences we find in the morphological appearances of cherubims to seraphims is that while cherubims appear with two wings, seraphims appear with six. Alright? Then, primarily, the word seraphims, all right, talks about the word seraphims in Hebrew, all right, means burning. You understand? Burning. It communicates fire. Praise God. Let me tell you something. Sometimes, stand up. Everybody stand up. Let me show you something. Praise God. <laughs> Come. Stand here. Stretch your hands towards me. Do we have a here? Now I'll show you something. Hmm? Sometimes you notice that one of the one of the things I noticed principally when I studied all through the scripture, I found out that one major way, one way ministry elements, one element in the realm, in the in, in the scripture that was used to talk about an operation of this of angels, and you, you see was that you see that. They talk about the coal of fire. You see that, for example, Isaiah said, I'm unholy and all. Then the seraphim flew with a coal of what? Fire. And they put it where? On his tongue. Are you following? So you will see that. So you find that the fire, all right, that's actually angels. That's how they move. That's how they operate. You have fire. That's, you understand? I'm not talking about physical fire. I'm talking about, you know, spiritual fire. So when we say fire, we say fire of the Holy Ghost and stuff like that, we're talking about a ministry of supernatural substance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A supernatural substance is, it's, it comes on you and does something in you. Praise God. All right, so for example, put your hand towards me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Father comes, oh, glory to God. Furodi, 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 shikri, rusi, prati. All right. So it's there is that. It's just a ministry, and that flow comes from a consciousness that you have to have. Glory to God. All right. That you can direct the flow of God's power. Increase the intensity because you are working with supernatural beings, all right, who have been called alongside to work with you as ministers. Praise the Lord. Remember, the angel is a minister of God, though. He's not a servant. Amen. That's why you will never find anywhere in scripture where any prophet spoke to an angel in a rude way. You can't find it. Or in a derogatory way. Such you won't see it. You will never see it. Because they are ministers in their own right. But you are senior to them. Praise God. Then when in the second service, Pastor Tolan is going to be teaching and talking about being at God's right hand, so you understand. Angels serve at his pleasure. They serve the hands. Hallelujah. I remember about Game of Thrones. You know the hand. The, the angels, they serve the hand. You remember the hand? rules and has authority over the army right uh -huh. they serve the hand we are children of the hand we sit at god's right hand praise the lord but they serve the affair and the purpose of the kingdom so if you have your own personal agenda an angel is not going to yield look at balaam and balak remember balaam prophet balaam balaam wanted to go and do his own thing what it was his angel that stopped him 
Who do you think that angel was? That was his angel. And that's why I stopped him. And now said, when you get there, we are, this is what you see. Do you understand? This is what you see. Angels don't act against God's will to favor you. No, you are not the focus. Jesus is. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands to us, everyone. Just bless his name. You have just listened to a message by Reverend Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. For other messages, visit our website at www.oikeacc.org. Remain blessed.